morning, sixth grade. Hello, lesson 14. We're going to be doing volume in the real world. So um, we've got a lot of problems to do. Now I've noticed in some of your work that you're not really uh, understanding or showing your understanding how to calculate volume. You're kind of just going through the motions, some of you. So let's work real hard today to um, follow the video closely, listen to it maybe more than once, and um, see if you can start uh, getting the hang of this. Two things you want to focus on today. <clears throat> the use of the area, I mean the volume formula where we're multiplying the area of the base times the height of the prism. Okay, remember the area of the base already has calculated the length times the width. So that part's already done if they give you the area of the base and all you have to do is multiply it by the height. That's what we learned yesterday. The next thing that you're gonna need to focus on today is your fraction, multiplication, addition, division. Okay, I need to see the fraction work. And I want you to get practice with fractions because um, when you get into algebra, you're going to need to be very fluent, very good in fraction arithmetic, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting fractions. So it's going to be labor intensive today with all the um, division and multiplication. But I know you guys can handle it. You're just going to have to make up your mind that this lesson is going to take some time and you're going to persevere and get it done to the best of your ability. All right. So this is a sandbox and they're giving us the area of the base of the sandbox and asking us, they're giving us the height as well. No, no, the volume as well. And they're asking us to find the height. So the area of the base is nine and a half feet squared. That means the length times the width of that sandbox will be equal to nine and a half square feet. We do not know um, the height. We don't know this. So, uh, but we are told that the volume is seven and one eighth cubic feet. So we know the volume. Okay, we know the area of the base, but we don't know the height. So look at my formula. I write it down. I fill in what I know. I know the volume is seven and one eighth. The area of the base is nine and a half, but I don't know the height, so I leave that there. And then I know this is a true statement here that seven and one eighth would be equal to nine and a half times H. So how do I find H? I have to divide seven and an eighth by nine and a half. This is a simple one-step equation that you guys are familiar with from module four, but it's with fractions. So it's just a little bit tougher. So I'm going to show my division of nine and a half. Here's where I went ahead and did the work over here, converting my mixed numbers to improper fractions or fractions bigger than one. And then I'm going to copy, uh, dot flop remember the division of a by a fraction is the same as multiplying can't really see my dot there can you multiplying by the reciprocal so i copy my fraction 57 eighths i multiply it by the reciprocal of 19 halves which is 2 19 and then i did my cross canceling i looked at the 2 and the 8 Two goes into two one time, two goes into eight four times. I looked at my 57 and my 19. Look over here, I did a quick check. I know that 19 times three is 57. So 19 goes into 19 once, 19 goes into 57 three times. You multiply straight across the numerator and the denominators and you get the height is three fourths feet, okay? Now there's a lot of math in there and it's all important. So I need for you to take the time to be able to do this on your own. At the end of sixth grade, which we will be at in just a few weeks, this needs to be something that you can all do, okay? 
So don't rush through it. Don't gloss over it. Um, it's not that hard once you put your mind to it. I'm just trying to get you guys to persevere and work hard for just a few more days and we'll be done. Okay. Now, the next one is that the sandbox was filled with sand, but after the kids played, some of the sand spilled out. Really? Huh. Okay. Now the sand is at a height of one half foot. So the sand is not all the way to the top anymore. The sand is only at one half foot. So now we're being asked to determine the volume of the sand in the sandbox after the children played in it. So the new volume will be the area of the base. So the base area is still the same, but the height is now one half foot. Okay, that's the new height. So here's my volume. I don't know what it is. I know the area of the base and I know the height of the sand. So convert two times nine plus one, 19 halves times one half is 19 fourths, which is four and three quarters uh, cubic feet. Okay, now just as we found the area of complex figures, now we're going to be asked to find the volume of complex uh, solids, okay? So this solid is clearly made up of two rectangular prisms. And this is what you want to get good at, learning to decompose solids into uh, prisms that you can calculate the volume of, okay? So there's no formula that we can use to calculate the volume of this L-shaped solid, all right? So we have to break it up, as I've shown you here, and there are other ways, but this is the ob most obvious to me. So I decided to just visually chop it off right there. And then I, I named my, so my prisms A and B, okay? So I can just keep them straight. So we're gonna first look at the volume of A. Look at my notation, all right? So this prism here, it obviously has a length of two and three fourths. That's given to us right there. It has a width of two meters. And the, and the only one I need now is the height. I don't know what the height is. But it, this whole thing has the same height, so all I have to do is look at the height over here, and I see the height is one-fifth. So length, width, height, I'm gonna multiply those three together. So do you see why you need to be fluent with fractions? Okay, we're not switching to decimals, we're working on our fraction skills right now. So convert, to uh, fractions greater than one. And you can always, if you have a whole number, you can always put a one underneath just so it looks, you know, consistent. And you're gonna multiply straight across for the numerators, straight across for the denominators. And you'll get one and two twentieths meters cubed. Well, that's just for the first prism, okay? Now we go to the second prism, B, and we look for the dimensions for B. Well, clearly the length is two and a fourth, the width is four and a third, and the height is one fifth. So there we have them. Now we convert nine fourths, 13 thirds, one fifth, multiplying straight across. This is what we get. Um, now you do the math, okay? Don't just copy, my cat's coming along. <laughs> okay. Um, now we're still not done because we now we have to add the two volumes together. So you're adding two mixed numbers. They have different denominators. So I'm going to help you out a little bit. You're always going, you, you know that one and two twentieths is the same as one plus two twentieths. So you can use what we call the commutative property to add the whole numbers together and then the fractions. Here I've shown you how I'm converting two twentieths to 660 so I have a common denominator. All you have to do is add the six and the 57 to get 63. And um, the last thing you have to do is convert that fraction, which is larger than one, into one and 360ths. And so this becomes three and 360ths, which reduces to three and 120th. So there's your answer. 
So this is very um, <clears throat> arithmetic intensive today. So um, pace yourself. If you need to take a break, do this in two parts, then, then do that. But I want you to make sure you, you can do all this on your own, okay? Um, the next one, the first exercise is the volume of the rectangular prism is 35 over 15 cubic yards. So they're giving us the volume. Okay, pay attention, they're giving us the volume. There it is. Determine the missing measurement using a one-step equation. This is almost like a review lesson, okay? Because you're, you're not only reviewing the volume formula, but you're also reviewing all your fraction skills and also your solving equation skills. So that's why this is so important. So here is our equation that we're gonna use. This, the, this says the volume is equal to the area of the base. Remember, capital B stands for the area of the base times the height. Well, they give us the area of the base right here, okay? They give us the area of the base. So that's my capital B. And we do not know the height. We do not know H. So we fill in what we know. We know the volume. There it is, 35 over 15. We know the area of the base, four-fifths. We don't know H. So our one-step equation is this. 35 over 15 equals four-fifths H. That is our one-step equation. All right, the reason why it's one step is to find out what H is. In other words, to get H by itself, or I wanna undo the multiplication by the four-fifths. Well, the inverse operation to multiplication is division. You can divide by four fifths. Well, remember when we divide by a fraction, we, the way we do that is we multiply by the reciprocal. The other way you can think about this is to multiply four fifths, use the, what we call the multiplicative inverse. We make the four fifths a one by multiplying it by five fourths, the inverse. Whatever you do to the right side of an equation, you do to the other side of the equation. So I multiply 35 fifteenths times five fourths as well. That's so that the equal sign stays true. So that this side will be equal to this side. Well, you can see that this cancels and it all goes to one and I'm left with just H. And we just have to do a little cross canceling here. Five goes into five once, five goes into 15 three times. So this becomes 35 over 12. So that's what I got here, converting this fraction, which is greater than one, into a mixed number, I get two and 11 twelfths, okay? So our height is two and 11 twelfths. All right, moving on to B. We have another rectangular prism, and we're given again the volume of the box is 45 over six cubic meters, the volume of the box. So that's what they give us. This time they give us the height. We are asked to find the area of the base. That's what we're asked to find. We do not know capital B. We know H. We do not know capital B. So we're going to multiply, uh, or excuse me, we're going to fill in to our formula what we know. We know the volume, 45 over six. We do not know the area of the base, so we leave that as a B, but we know the height. So again, here's your one-step equation. 45 over six, which is the volume, is equal to the area of the base, which we don't know, times the height, which is nine halves. So there's your one-step equation. You're gonna multiply both sides by the inverse of nine halves, okay? And then you're going to, this one works out really well. Look at all this cross cancellation. Nine goes into nine once, five times one and three, five thirds is B. Okay, and that's what I got. Five thirds meters equals B. Okay, now we have a fish tank and it says that it needs to be filled with more water. D 
determine how much water the tank can hold. So first, we're just gonna find the volume of the whole tank. So that's 3 fourths times 1 fourth times 3 fifths. So multiplying, we get 9 eightieths cubic meters. Now we're asked to determine how much water is already in the tank. So that would be 3 fourths times 1 fourth times 3 eighths. There's only, it's only filled to a height of 3 eighths metered. So multiplying that out, we get 9 over 128 cubic meters. So the last um, question is how much more water is needed to fill the tank? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do this. <laughs> I wrote, do you remember how to subtract fractions? You could take the volume of the tank, which was 9 80ths, and subtract the volume of the water, which is 9 over 128. Now look at those denominators. Do you really want to spend the time finding a common denominator between these two? I don't. I'm telling you, you need to be fluent in fractions, which you do. But there's also a t an opportunity here for us to be flexible in our thinking and our problem solving. And instead of going through the uh, trauma uh, <laughs> and the rigmarole of finding a common denominator here, let's look, go back to our diagram. We're being asked to find how much more water, how much more water is needed to fill the tank. Well, look at this empty portion here. What, what we could do is calculate the volume of the empty portion of the tank. Remember, volume is how much space something takes up. So we're just trying to figure out what is the space of that empty portion. And all we need to know is what is this height here of the empty portion. Wouldn't it be a lot easier to do this subtraction problem? Three fifths minus three eighths. I think it would be. So that's what I've done here, three fifths minus three eighths. And I'm trying to find the missing height, the um, height of this empty portion. So I can get a quick common denominator by multiplying three fifths times eight over eight and three eighths times five over five. And I'll get 24 fortieths minus 15 fortieths, which is going to give me nine fortieths. So that's my missing height. Now I do the volume of the, of the empty portion, the height times the length times the width, which are the same. And I get the, the answer I'm looking for, which is 27 over 640. Now that we see this answer, we can figure that our common denominator must have been 640. Um, or unless they reduced it, but it's probably 640. Okay, moving on. This is our last two problems. More de decomposing um, prisms. I mean, excuse me, solids that are made up of rectangular prisms. I chopped it here. Okay, you could have also chopped it there. Okay, there's, it's just up to you. So I've got prism A and prism B. So the volume of prism A is going to be 12. Okay, 12 is this length here by 2. And the height is 3 and a fourth. The height is the same. So this is going to be 3 and a fourth. Okay, and I got that from this 3 and a fourth. Okay, you need to learn to re read the diagrams carefully. So doing the math out, I get 78 cubic meters. Now I look at B. They give me the length is nine and a half. The width is two and a third. The height is three and a fourth. I get that volume to be 72 and 124. Not done yet, have to add those together. I get 150 and 124 cubic meter, okay? Um, if you need help seeing these dimensions, that's what office hours is for, okay? Hopefully, you know, you can rewind the video and look at, you know, what I've said and how I've highlighted things and whatnot, but if you need extra help, which is perfectly fine, come to office hours, please. 
Okay, so last problem. Now, I chopped this up a little bit different than the teacher's edition did. So um, it, it, there's, a, there's many ways you can do this. So I'm gonna walk you through how I did it. I saw um, three separate prisms, A, B, and C, each with a different depth, okay? So I'm gonna first look at prism A. I know it has a width of a half of a foot. I know it has a height of three-fourths because the height is gonna be the same. So my height is gonna be three-fourths. What I don't know is this distance here, which would be the length. I don't know the length. They give us that the full length of this solid is one and a half feet, okay? They tell me here that this width is one half foot. So that means, let me get a different color. That means that, I'll get a marker. This width is also one half foot. That's why I wrote one half there. This is one fourth foot, see one fourth. So that means this is one fourth foot, one fourth, okay? So I've got my full length, which is one and a half. That's what this original thing is, is telling us. If I stretch, subtract off the one half, I'm at one. If I subtract off the one fourth, I'm at three fourths. So therefore I know this width is three fourths and there's my volume of prism A. Now going to prism B, I already know the width is one half, the height is three fourths and I need to figure out what the uh, length is here, okay? I need to figure out what this is. So looking at the full, um, I guess we'll call that width, the full width of C, you see this arrow here? This portion, C is one fourth longer than B. Well, if C is one and a fourth long, that means B is only one foot long. So you do a subtract. You do one and a fourth minus that one fourth to get what B is, okay? So B is only one foot long. There's my volume for B. And then C is one fourth by three fourths by one and a fourth. There you go, and you get that volume. Then you're gonna add them all up. You have to get a common denominator to do so. I'm not gonna walk you through the steps. Um, but if you need help on that, that is a red flag warning. If you cannot add fractions with a um, different denominators, that is a um, fifth grade skill um, that we worked on again in sixth grade, but um, it's something you all need to be fluent in. Okay, off we go to um, problem set. If you have questions, come see me in office hours. I hope you guys have a great day. Work hard and be kind.